Harlem Hit Parade, a journey through the early years of rhythm and blues. Black popular music of the 40s, 50s, and 60s. I'm Felix Hernandez. And I'm Karen Jefferson. There were thousands of rhythm and blues vocal groups that recorded during the 50s. In an industry where there was room for only a handful of successful groups like the Eldorados, most of these thousands were never known outside their hometowns, and usually never known outside their own street. Groups faded into obscurity as discouraged members left show business for other jobs. There was one vocal group from Washington, D.C. that was one step from stardom. They had all the right ingredients for success, a polished, identifiable sound, a great lead singer, good original material, and a contract with one of the largest record companies in the world, RCA Victor. They even made it to the Howard Theater, Washington, D.C.'s Apollo. This band would like to bring on another RCA recording group, none other than Washington on. Hot records, hey! Thank you. This time we'd like to sing Embraceable You. The group was the Heartbreakers. Their lead singer, who hasn't sung a note since 1955, is Robert Evans. We felt as if we were going to the moon. At that time, RCA Victor, in our eyes, was the biggest, most successful record company in the United States. And we felt just by signing with them that we were going to be instant stars. Signing with RCA Victor was not the godsend that we had imagined because... RCA Victor was not into promotion of rhythm and blues. Black-owned record shops did not even carry RCA Victor records. And that was the crowd that we thought we were trying to reach. by the Heartbreakers, featuring the lead voice of Robert Evans. Who are you listening to as a youngster? Sonny Till of the Oils. He influenced me a great deal. Never even thought about singing, but then I found myself imitating him till I got to be pretty good at imitating Sonny Till. And then when I started singing with the Heartbreakers, they had to get me out of the habit of sounding like Sonny Till. Robert Evans was not an original member of the Heartbreakers, but joined them before they recorded. 
He wrote their most well-known song, Heartbreaker. Uh, yes, indeed. I wrote it. Started right in, in the bathtub at home. When I met the Heartbreakers, they were already a group. And I heard them at a playground in Southeast. And uh, I went over to the playground to see where all this music was coming from. And I saw that I knew two of the guys because I was raised up with them. So then I told them that I sang, and they say, well, we need another guy. Come to practice. And they were never there. In fact, they were ducking me, you know. So I said, the only way I can get in this group is to get a song that they want. So I went home, and I started writing. I think about 10, 10 15 minutes at the most, I had it. Then I went down to the house that they practiced and left it with one of the guys' mother, and they got in touch with me then. Heartbreakers, like most R&B vocal groups in the early 50s, started singing on the street corners. What you find about most groups in those days, they would be willing to sing for nothing, just to sing. What happened to that? Why don't groups sing out in the street? When did it end? When did that era? I don't know. I could not pinpoint a year. It was, to me, an art form. There were these groups on the corner, each one of them trying to be the best sometimes getting together, competing on corners. And uh, you, sometimes you'd have uh, maybe 100 people standing around, and they'd chip in or something, you know. But uh, we weren't doing it for the money they were throwing in the hat. We were doing it just to say, hey, I'm, our group is better than your group. And it was fun. <laughs> to the west rock you baby the way he knows it's best he'll rock you fast then he'll stop and he'll rock oh so slow well he'll swing you up and down 
were one of the few R&B vocal groups in the early 50s lucky enough to have a recording contract with a major label. They did only two recording sessions for RCA Victor, which produced eight songs in all. Well, the one that stands out in my mind really is, is our first recording session for RCA because that was our first taste of professionalism and being treated like uh, up-and-coming stars. And uh, I'll never forget that as long as I live. Do you remember any specific songs that you might have had difficulty with? Why Don't I? And after about 20 takes, they were getting ready to scrap it. And uh, one of our co-managers, Joe Drew, called us aside and waved some money. <laughs> and the next take was a take. <laughs> Why don't I just forget you? Why don't I admit we are
heartbreakers suffer from bad management, bad timing, and a lack of promotion. They worked so hard to be successful and reach their goal, to be a well-known money-making touring group. Robert Evans hoped that the Heartbreakers would also cross over to a mass audience. That was the ultimate goal of, of uh, groups in those days. In those days, um, most groups sang in black places. But once you crossed over to the supper club circuit, which very few black artists had privy to, then it was a different world. That is the top. The Heartbreakers, like most R&B vocal groups of the 50s, failed. Even with their RCA contract, Robert Evans and the Heartbreakers are forgotten today. In the early 50s, the days before rock and roll, it was difficult for a black R&B group to achieve mass popularity. If I had to describe our sound, a DJ said here that we sounded too black to be white and too white to, we, to be black. So, like, we were in the middle of the road. And, um... I think a lack of promotion kept us from really finding our niche on either side. Harlem Hit Parade is produced with funds provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Through national